right. We are live. Hi, Julia. Hi, Aya. Uh, How are you? I love your, your outfit. It's very pretty. And I really look forward to being able to doodle together. It'll be fun. Yeah, because we paint, but when we doodle, we, we don't have to try at all. We can just relax, you know? It's like I think therapy. You're so right. That is so true. You know, a lot of people play, uh, pay a lot of money to art therapists to help them get over their problems. And all they have to do is doodle at home. Yeah, you can doodle at home. And that was another thing, too. Actually, it, when they send people to those um, the behavioral health center, like most of what they're doing is like art, just like drawing and coloring. I'm like, you can do that yourself. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, that's my thought anyway. Yes, definitely. So I'm going to go ahead and share this just so everybody can tune in and watch us doodle together. Right. And I was going to share that this is what I painted on your channel. And if anybody wants to see me paint it live, uh, you know, I was painting it live on your channel. Uh, there is a link in the description that leads to that particular video. Uh, these are two little boys who are enjoying uh, the 4th of July and their summer. And I think the thing that I like best about what I managed to do with this uh, watercolor painting is, can you see the little boy's tongue in his mouth? Oh, I can. You're right. Wow. <laughs> So I, I like that part. I, I Not everything came out the way I wanted it to, but I thought that was so realistic, you know. You know what I kind of like, though, is like even if there's a certain painting where you might not like certain aspects of it, like I've done certain paintings before, but there'll be like one or two things. I'll be like, well, that's kind of cool how that turned out, you know. Yeah, but I think it's a good painting. I like it. It has a very Fourth of July feeling to it. Yeah, I think it does. And this is my 4th of July shirt, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stars and st um, stars. Very nice. I'm not so, doing anything special for the 4th of July, but, you know. No, I'm not. I Like I like I said, I even thought about going outside to look at the fireworks. But honestly, I don't know. I just kind of want to stay home unless something happens where I have to leave. That's how I feel right now because I've been, you know, everybody else says, well, we had to be home and do the stay. I, I didn't do that. So I kind of want to actually be home sometimes, you know. Yeah, I, I enjoy staying home. Yeah, I'm a homebody and I kind of realized that about myself. Well, I've always known that. We're like, oh, you just want to stay home. And but yeah, I mean, I'll go shopping and stuff, but I like being at home. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to turn a leaf. Okay. And I'm going to let myself just doodle whatever I want to. I've got two things to doodle with. My pen mm -hmm. and my crayons. Oh, cool. Well, I have pencils and colored pencils, so that's kind of my thought. And you can see that I use too much water, so there's some green over on this, this page. And I'm going to doodle on this page because it, you know, it's already a little bit messed up. I mean, yeah, you can do it. It's, I think it's a great idea. Let's see what I want to doodle. I have a thought about what I want to doodle. Just kind of an idea. You can sing Yankee Doodle Dandy at the same time because it's Yankee almost right on. Riding on a pony, he stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. Yankee Doodle, keep it up. Yankee Doodle, <laughs> fine horses and the steps. And I might not remember all the words, so and maybe I should. The lady's handy. Yeah, you're right. See, I didn't <laughs> want to do it wrong, though, so I was like, you know, I don't want to make a mistake where they get mad at me like oh what did you do I right this is not a very serious song you know <laughs> you know what they think there's some history behind that what they think the song is about <laughs> it's, I don't know if I'll say it might not be family friendly <laughs> it is about a soldier but a certain yeah, kind of I know I know he's a dandy 
Yes, but that's what we thought when we were kids, like in first grade. And the teacher's like, oh, no, that's not true. Where did you get that idea from? He said he was a dandy and he's putting a feather in his hat. I mean, you can, but anyway, you're like, that, that's not true. But then later on, it became patriotic because the Americans decided when the British were singing, it's them, you know what? We'll turn it around. We'll make it about us. Yeah. Oh, that's a good thing to do when people are calling you names. Yeah, it's a great PR stunt, you know. Yeah. So do you want me to tell you more about my liberation notes? Yeah, I would like to hear about it. So and you might ask yourself, why is it called that? Well, at the at the workplace of Mijong, um, they are all the employees are encouraged to join clubs. Oh that are sponsored by the employer. You know, and some of them are athletic clubs or, you know, different kinds of clubs. Um, but it's supposed to show employee spirit or something like that. And Mi Jung doesn't really want to join a club. Um, she's not that kind of person. She's not sociable. And also, um, she has to, every day, it takes her forever to get home, you know, because she lives out of town, not in Seoul. Yeah, so it's not going to be practical, right? Yeah, so a lot of times she, uh, the lady who's in charge of the clubs would call her in and say, how come you're not a member of the club? And she would say, well, um, I, I can't because I live out of town and I just wouldn't be able, I wouldn't have the time because it takes me so long. But the uh, employer just you know employer policies were such that every once in a while she was called in and the two other people at work who also weren't members of clubs were called in um and asked over and over again how come you're not a member of a club it would be so much better if you joined a club and the two guys there's one one short kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, overweight guy, and the other guy is the the man who has a daughter. He's a divorced man and has a daughter. Uh, yes. The one that Mi Jung's sister is in love with. Okay, but I mean that developed later. But anyway, he does he doesn't want to join a club because he he's a single father. He also has another business besides working at that employer. And so he always needs to hurry home to his daughter and to the restaurant that he and his two sisters are running. Uh -huh. But even though that's in Seoul and so they don't have to commute or anything. But still it takes time to. Yeah, and he wants to spend time with his daughter when she gets off school. Um, so eventually these three people are thrown together a lot because they keep getting called into the office to be asked, why are you not members of a club? Oh my gosh, it just seems so absurd. But I, I guess 
that sounds like a corporate thing, right? Or yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, in in Asian countries, corporate spirit is sort of like team spirit, and yeah. So you have to show that you are in fact willing to do what they ask of you. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Um, so they decide they're going to form a club that basically does nothing so to get those people off their back. Oh, that's kind of funny. The club so, of nothing. Yeah, so then they had to decide what the club name was and what it is they were doing, supposedly. Um, and so they worked out that the, it's going to be a liberation club because <laughs> they wanted to be liberated from all this club stuff. <laughs> Squawk, squawk, that sounds fun. Yeah. So, and they made up some rules, you know, so that they could share those with the lady who's in charge of the club. And she, because she would want to know that it's a legitimate club with rules and everything. Well, that's kind of cool. What What are the rules? Like, our rules are we don't have to meet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rules are you don't have to pretend to be happy. Oh, cool. And you don't have to pretend to be sad. And you shouldn't lie to people. I mean, you don't have to tell them anything, but you shouldn't lie to them. Well, those sound like pretty good rules. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty simple rules. But what happened was the lady who's in charge of the club started to get interested in their club. Uh-oh. She wanted to join the club. And, you know, she was a very kind of artificial looking person she always always smiled oh like kind of a fake just like corporate yeah yeah so she was always had this big smile on her face and she always looked insincere um because it was her you know her job was to cheer other people up or something or that's what she felt um so, but then she she started to see them having their meetings and she got interested. And she asked to join the club. That's interesting. Yeah, and they started to tell her the rules um, that you shouldn't pretend to be happy. And she started she almost started crying. She says, I don't know how not to pretend to be happy. And she started to explain that she has this fake smile on her face all the time. She doesn't know how to stop it. She doesn't even want to. And it gives her a lot of trouble when she goes to attend funerals because you're not supposed to smile at a funeral. But she just oh. can't, she can't stop smiling. And it's not because she's happy, you know. Oh, well, that sounds kind of like extreme. Like, I can see a fake smile, but like, oh, context sometimes. Wow. Are there people like this? In real life, I think or there are. I think there are people, for instance, who laugh when they're nervous or smile when they're nervous. I mean, I kind of do that. Sometimes I will laugh when I'm nervous. If somebody says something really strange, I'm not like a confrontational person. So I'll admit, sometimes I probably might laugh like, I don't know how to respond to that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it can happen to anyone, but some people more so than others. Anyway, I haven't finished watching the series, so I don't know what's going to happen with the club part. But um, So what they do is basically they get together sometimes for lunch, and they don't even talk to each other. They just write notes about their liberation, how they would like to be freed from other people. Oh, that's interesting, though. Yeah. They don't want to have to have the constraints they want to live an authentic life, I guess, so to speak. Yes, yes. And there are so many constraints. I mean, Mi Jung uh, is always uh, in charge of designing brochures. And then her boss always tells her she did everything wrong and she has to do it over again. Makes her stay after work to do it. Even though it takes hours to get home? Yes, yeah. And actually, her, her designs are very good. And right now, in the part that I'm watching, she's in a company-wide competition 
on her designs because she wants to become a permanent employee. She's only a, a temp. Um, but her boss will not be happy if she wins. Oh, what's that? But even, meanwhile, what happened with Mr. Gu, you know, the monster who was hiding out there and who was Mi Jung's boyfriend for a while? Yeah. Well, one day he decided he was going back to his other life. And, you know, he, he wanted to just say goodbye to her. And she said, no, I'll call you every once in a while. Um, but basically what he did was he ghosted her. Because when she tried to call him, the number was no longer operational. Well, I mean, he is hiding, so. Well, and he's not, not hiding anymore. It's just he ghosted his old friends when he came to, you know, live in the rural area. Yeah. And decided to go back to the city and his old life. Uh, he thought that he should do the same thing. Oh, Interesting. So she's going to try and figure out why he ghosted her. I, I guess I'm guessing that's going to be. Well, no, what, what, what actually happened was, okay. Things with, uh, with a single father went well for Gijong and her mother, oh, her brother, by the way, just one day decided he was not going to work anymore. So he decided to stay on the farm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the mother was talking to Ki Jung and she said, I want to see the man. I'll tell you if he's a good man for you to marry or not. So Ki Jung arranged for the mother to be able to watch them from afar while they were having lunch somewhere at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But the mother, uh, Got a, you know, apparently she had a good opinion of the guy. So she got up and she paid their bill. You know, she paid the lunch bill for the couple. Oh, and, interesting. And she came by their table and said, oh, the food here is so good. Uh, and I paid your bill and it, feel free to order anything because I, I paid, it's on my card or something. Um, and then she left and the guy said, who was that woman? Oh, it's Oma. It's mom. I, she wasn't actually supposed to act like this. She was supposed to sit and watch from afar, but she did this. Anyway, the mother was home, and she was very tired after the long trip. And she put the rice cooker. I mean, it was one of those pressure cookers that you put on the stove. And then she went to take a nap in her room, and when the son saw that the rice was burned, he went to check on her and she had died in her sleep. Oh my gosh. Why? Okay, I understand being kind of an eccentric movie, but how dramatic. Yeah. So yeah, so the mother died and everybody's all sad and everything. And you know, the the son even kind of proposed to the girl who had always been nice to him. And all sorts of things were changing. And then Mr. Gu appears, you know, and I don't know how much time passed because it wasn't clear. But Mr. Gu knocks on the door of the family and a woman that we've never seen before opens the door and he's confused. And he says, is this the house of Mr. Yom? Um, and she said, oh, yes, just a moment. I'll call him. Oh, honey, there's somebody here to see you. And it was the father, but apparently he had remarried and none of the children lived there anymore. Oh, interesting. Well, how much time had elapsed when this happened? Was it just like a few months or a year? Hard to say. It was, it was filmed in such a way that we couldn't tell, but the father ha looked a lot older. You know, his hair was a different um, so it's like he ghosted me, John, and he expected everything to say the same. And then years later, he came back and he was really upset that everything hadn't stayed the same. Well, that's strange. You can't, 
Why? Okay, that's funny. Like I ghosted you, but I I'm upset that you moved on with your lives. Like, <laughs> like really, nothing is guaranteed, buddy. You moved on with your life in a pretty. <laughs> that's a, that is such an eccentric kind of storyline. Gee. Yeah, I mean, because part of the tragedy for the family it wasn't just that he ghosted me, Jong. He ghosted the entire family. And the father had really been counting on leaving his business to him, to Mr. Gu, because he was such a hard worker, you know. And he thought that he was a loyal employee. So I guess like that would be kind of a betrayal in a way. Yeah, in a way it was. I mean, in a way, learning that he was actually a rich guy from the city uh, was kind of upsetting. You know, that he was just slumming with them and that it wasn't as meaningful to him as it was for them. Yeah, I think this is, I mean, even though this has some really eccentric storylines in there, I guess what they're trying to convey is like certain human interactions maybe, like, but the storylines just seem really extreme. Like dying because of a rice cooker fire and just, it's- No, so no, no, I mean, the, the rice cooker didn't kill her. She, she was always, we always saw her making rice. You know, okay. she was always. But I thought, always, it, okay, so like it wasn't fumes or smoke or anything. She just died. In, no, you know? no, she just died. Uh, probably her heart stopped or something. Okay. All right. But still, it's, it just seems kind of dramatic. But unless yeah, she. Do, people do actually die in their sleep. That can happen. It's actually not a bad thing. If I have to go uh, anytime soon, I would rather go in my sleep than be in a hospital. Oh, no. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I totally understand that. We didn't expect it because somehow she seemed healthier than her husband. And her husband was working even harder than she was, you know, laboring in the field, sweating all the time and everything. So you would have expected him to go first. I'm sure he thought he would. Yeah, I think, though, you know. A lot of people always think that's going to have him, but I guess maybe you're right in a way it is realistic because sometimes the spouse or the person that you think like, oh, they seem like relatively healthy and then they end up having a health issue and somebody that you would think. So I guess that could be realistic. Yeah, I think it was pretty realistic. I mean, everybody dies sometime and not everybody dies when they're like 99. So No, they don't. I have a confession to make, like some people don't like this, but I just, I know everybody's going to die someday, but I have just actively chosen from a young age not to think about it because I think, yes, it's going to happen, but I don't have to dwell upon it. And that's one thing I just don't want to think about. And that probably sounds silly, but I'm just not going to no, worry. It's about. okay. Look, I mean, I don't think about it all the time either, you know, I mean. No, but some people chastise me, like, they'll be like, well, you have to plan. And then, like, it's funny because they it used to be this thing, like, you need to plan to have, like, this burial. But the way I see it is I feel like it's the obligation of the living to take care of the dead. I have a weird look at it because I would do that for my family. You know, I don't know. I have a weird way of looking at it, I guess, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean. I'm not. I'm not a person who goes around black bear, uh, buying burial plots or life insurance or any of that. No. Somebody tried to sell me one once. Yeah, I'm like, no, don't think so. That's weird. I don't think it went over very well. Well, some people in my family's friends are no. I only sold a few. Yes, there's a reason for that. And that's not something most people like you go soliciting for that. I just don't think so. But hey, you know, I could be wrong. <laughs> but anyway, it's an interesting story. Yeah, I don't know how it ends because I haven't, you know, I, I only watch it when I have time. No, I mean, it just sounds interesting. It sounds like kind of dramatic in a way. But I guess a lot of the K dramas do have that dramatic element, right? Yeah, but this is this is actually, you know, I like the dramatic elements, but this is kind of uh, maybe too realistic for me. I don't know. I guess it has realism too, but 
it just still feels kind of dramatic, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I guess the part about dying in your sleep could could definitely happen. So maybe ah. It actually happened to a woman that I didn't I never met her, but uh at one time uh I was introduced to this woman by Daniel Carter, the mm -hmm. composer, because uh she was a music teacher and we were hoping that she would get the kids that she was teaching uh to sing some of our songs oh that's cool well anyway um not too long after i was introduced to her and we became facebook friends uh it turned out that she died in her sleep you know oh. and she wasn't old you know really old she she had several daughters so we're teenage um, one of them was still living at home. So that was kind of weird and unexpected because I almost didn't know her. And then this happened. Yeah, that, that would be unexpected. Like, oh, like I just met you, but yeah, that's quick. Yeah. Squat, squat, squat. Oh, I like the person you're drawing. That's cool. Thank you. basically a doodle so i wasn't looking at a reference or anything i am kind of looking at a reference but it's a doodle for me because i'm i still would probably want to go back and do more but it's a lot faster than what i usually do <laughs> okay well that's a, that's a step in a good direction i think i think so but i still feel like uh no dueling is good it's fun i just i still feel like oh i want to go back and like make lots of changes like the proportion like i i really want to fix it and stuff mm. well, just, just they're not something you fix you just go with it and go with the flow
Squacky, squack, squack, squack. So I wonder what people like to doodle uh, that are that might be tuning in. Like if you are watching this now or in replay, what sort of things do you guys like to doodle? I sometimes doodle flowers. That's what I'm doing right now by the lady that I'm, you know, drawing. I like that. She's in a, a field. Yeah. Maybe. Are you doing a self-portrait? It's not a self-portrait. I can show you what I'm doing. Who do you think it is? I'm not sure. Who is that? I don't know. What's it look like so far? Uh, is there anybody squawky there? Squawky. squawky. Oh. oh, it looks like a parrot by, by that person. Yeah, it probably doesn't exactly look like you, but I just was drawing the picture of you in the parrot. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I said if I do it fast, I don't think I'm doing it quite right. But, you know. That's okay. It's interesting. It's more just like a generic, I guess, person with a parrot because I'd have to spend more time to get the proportions right and stuff. That's okay. No, it's, it's, it's fun. I'm definitely just doing a generic person because I figure I want to totally take the pressure off about, you know, trying to fit any kind of mold.
Oh, yeah, so oh, they're probably practicing for tomorrow because they do the air show thing with the um, airplanes. Oh, yeah. They fly in for me. I mean, it looks really cool, but I don't even see the point of having to go there. You can see them like in a 20 mile radius. Like you can literally just go outside and watch the air show. That's free. I'm not going to. Well, first off, I don't like crowds, but. I don't even see the point. Like you could just go outside and some people wait all day to see that fire. That's just, I can't, no, I just can't do that. It was yeah. never that. I like how you're doing it in all crayon though. That is really awesome. Well, I think I, I started with a pen, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing mixed media right now. Yeah, you're right. You had a pen first, but I mean like the coloring, that's awesome. Yeah. What I noticed is that a lot of the art people that I follow anyway, they seem to do a combination of art and sort of therapy for their viewers. I've been noticing that. And then it's like really big now to talk about mental health. And then a lot of them have sponsorships for that mental health service. Well, now I think, I don't know. And I don't use it, but yeah, that seems to be a big thing now, I guess in the art world. Yeah, well, I guess Bob Ross was doing it way back when. But the cool thing about um, Hyene or Bob Ross, I feel like when they do it, I feel like they're just naturally soothing. And I'm not saying other people aren't either, but I think it's kind of cool when it's just something innate within you and not like, oh, like, here's an ad. For, like, I have no problem with ads, but I'm just like, well, now I'm just like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. There's certain things, I guess I just won't, like, look, I think ads are great, but, you know, a few years ago, I was getting offered ads for a couple of things, and I said no, but mm -hmm. it was just weird stuff. It was, like, hair extensions and, like, a curly iron, and I'm like, I don't use any of this, and I don't have hair extensions, so I just told the people that, and then I guess the guy who asked me if I wanted to, like, show those things on my channel he said, well, what about a face spin brush? So I thought about it and I did review it, but I don't think he liked what I said because I just said, well, it seems like it'd be good to use on your feet because I don't use spin brushes on my face. And I just mm -hmm. used it on my feet and then it broke a month later. And the price that he was charging for it was hilarious because you go on to Walmart and you can just buy one of those face brushes like $14. He was charging $70 for this thing. But you could give your customers or your viewers a 70 percent discount code so it'd be almost the price of when you'd buy it i don't know it was just strange i was like okay yeah it just didn't seem to fit what you were doing no i'm sure for other people it does but this is what's interesting like some some of the people i guess they're such big um you know creators and they have like a p.o box listed i suppose on their contact page so they said people just send them things like companies just send them things every day and they said oh yeah some of it's bad and we don't even bother reviewing it and this one lady just ends up donating a whole bunch of it and i thought oh that's interesting like i don't know that some that she was getting so many things sent to her i'm just like oh very interesting Well, they should definitely give us our art supplies, don't you think? Well, I would love to do that. Yeah, definitely. I think, though, basically what I would need to do, I would need to, this is the, what I think is the difference and what I'm kind of afraid to do because I'm afraid I might get weird stuff, is some of those people have, like, a contact address, like a P.O. box, not, like, a physical address. But I don't really want to put that because I don't know. I'm afraid people will send me weird stuff, so I'm not really interested in like getting one and making that public, you know, just for my own protection. Cause I, I don't know. No, I understand. I, 
I think that you can have one and not make it public and people can contact you by email. And then if you think they're reputable, then you can let them send it to you. Yeah, that's probably better. But I also would worry even if somebody is a bid creator and they just are publishing that and people are sending them random things, you don't really know. Like I'm not, it could look professionally packaged, but you don't know. I would just be very cautious about that, I guess. Yeah. I know Laura Vitale and her husband were, um, they, they just do a cooking channel now, but a few years ago, I guess they were interested in exploring vlogging. They decided it wasn't for them. But one of the things that was happening was, okay, so she would make all these recipes on our channel, but then on her vlogging channel, she started showing how people kept sending her like the food that they made based on her recipes, which just seemed really strange to me that you would go... Oh, yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. And no, then she, I would not. yeah, she finally had to say to all her like fans, cause she had po posted her PO box. She was, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not accepting any more baked goods. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I would not accept baked goods because you never know who, who it was. Or what yeah. Was. I would be like, no, that's, that's just, but I also was thinking, too, like, I've never felt like I've liked somebody. I've admired certain people. But I was never this kind of fan that I was like, oh, I'm going to make them something and send it to them. Like, I, I, I just have never been that kind of fan. I don't know. It just feels like a, it seems a bit much. Like, I mean, I guess people may be writing a fan letter. That I understand. But the whole, like, oh, I'm going to send them something. It just seems kind of weird because you don't have a personal relationship with this person and you're sending something to them. I don't know. Yeah. Unless, okay, this is where I could see it. Like if you were into art and you wanted to send fan art to someone, uh, maybe that I could kind of get, but like sending them weird items. Like, you know, Duran Duran said one time because they've done a lot of videos like on the beach that these women sent them some sand one time. They're like, don't know why? But Simon Le Bon, he's so funny. He goes, I had fun with the sand. I played with it for an hour. He's so silly. <laughs> well, I guess he knows how to enjoy things. Yeah, but I liked his response to that. I'm just like, it's a little... It's one thing to admire someone or to be their fan. That's great. But I think you should draw the line at like sending them items that they might not want, you know? Mm -hmm. Or need. Well, I think my doodle is complete because I filled in Aww. most of the paper. That's good, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think you had a good time and you had fun doing it. It looks real fun. Yeah. So I think I'll start doodling something else. Okay. Right, so that's good to me. I like to see your doodle. I do, I do.
are I'm scrapping. What's that sound? It's my computer. It just it keeps making thing noises. I'm sorry. Mm. I just thought maybe we had a comment or something. Oh no, I wish that's what it was, but um my computer just makes it keeps telling me I need to install my um virus protection, but I just don't do that anymore because I don't know, it didn't really seem to make a difference, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I mean I don't I don't know. That's okay. You keep saying, you know, change profits. No, it's like panicking because I haven't done it. I'm like, okay, just chill, computer. They, they never used to like force it like that, but now it's like with the 11 update, it's like, you must, you must. And I'm like, okay.
What's that? I forgot oh. to change it to Aya's doodle from Aya's painting. But I did see paint. I mean, I did see, I thought I saw a doodle. Um, I thought I also saw a doodle thing too. Well, that was on the thumbnail. I, I mean. So. Okay, I gotcha. But I thought I saw a keyword that said doodle. Yep, it was. I'm talking about. Yeah, the, I saw the, a painting keyword too. I meant, you know, this this middle slot here. Oh, uh, no. okay, I see it now. I see it now. I could have called it Aya's Doodle. Okay, I see what I was thinking about earlier. I see the paint with us keyword, but it kind of is, I guess, in a way. Doodle with us? <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe I'm just not ever going to be a, like I do maybe do it a little, but I think it's just I have to spend more time because I'm like, oh, I want to redo this whole thing now. Like that's just that's the reaction I get. Well, yeah, that's not what doodling is. See, what I'm doing right now is I'm, because I'm a face person, I'm not really a flower person. So I, I just am filling the page with different faces. But, yeah, you know, I don't think I'm doodling. I think I'm more just sketching and wanting to redo it later kind of yeah. deal. But you um, did, well, you made a beautiful doodle the last time you doodled. Yeah, but that was more just freehand doodling. That was more, I mean, I could start again, I guess. I guess I could. Well, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm freehand doodling. I mean, maybe I shouldn't have started drawing a person. That might have been the problem. <laughs> I can still doodle when it's people. I, I just don't have to have it be specific people. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where you get in trouble is. If you want it to look exactly like somebody, then you have to work really hard at it. Yeah, but even to like just even if it were to look like a generic person, I guess what I'm trying to say is I feel I think I get kind of like stressed out about it too much. I think that's just my thing. But I, I know that about myself, like when it comes to art, like that is one thing that I like. I just like to get proportions right to me like that can take a long time, but so can Clint. I just have a lot of, I just have a lot of things, you know, that I do, I guess, that not everybody else does. Mm
Are you drawing the flower now? Mm-hmm. It's pretty. Thanks. It's not really a doodle either, I guess. I guess I was more doodling last time. Yeah, last time you were the one who was doodling. <laughs> I know, like that was just very stream of conscious and it was just kind of happened, but like tonight I'm like, oh. Like, I'm just kind of, like, this is just a quick drawing for me more than doodling, really. I drew a crowd. Oh, I like it. Lots That's... of different people. <laughs> wow, are they watching the fireworks? <laughs> Maybe they are. Maybe they are. You could say it's your, I don't know, 4th of July crowd. Mm -hmm. well, that's neat. I like it. Yeah, and I don't think I'm going to color those. Well, you don't have to. I gave up on the other drawings. I'm like, oh, well, it looked kind of not what I wanted. So, although I was having fun looking at parrots. Yeah, they're beautiful. Especially like the Quaker parrots because they're green. Mm -hmm. I love a green bird. Yeah, Summer wants to be involved in everything that I'm making in the kitchen, and then he wants some. I wish Summer came on our videos sometimes, but, you know. That, that, was, that was when I had them in the kitchen, but. I know. I know. He does his own. Well, I think it might have annoyed other people because the cockatiels were always making noises. When, when I had the live streams in the kitchen, you know, in that area. I loved it, though. I love the sound of birds. Like, it's my favorite thing. But I've had people get mad at me before when I call them because there's a lot of birds around here. And they would, like, kind of nest in trees nearby. And my friend, like, a few years ago, she got really upset. She goes, what the heck? What are all those birds? And I just thought it sounded really nice. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes when I'm... Out in the wilderness, and I'm I'm actually taking pictures of flowers, but the soundtrack is birds, and it's quite loud. Yeah, but I love it. Like I like that too. I just love birds. Like I love them as a soundtrack. I love them squawking. I love everything about birds. So I don't mm -hmm. own one, but I love to look at them and you know photograph yeah. them. And I've drawn a few of them. So. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about doodling? Are you having fun doing it, Ida? Ida? Yeah, I had fun doing it. But I think the thing that makes it a little bit difficult is, you know, I was doing it. I wanted the camera to see how I was doing it. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I guess one of the differences is that when you're doodling just by yourself, then you don't have it like propped up like this and there's no camera. <laughs> Yeah, I think well, what we need is like your phone on a tripod where it can like film it at a certain angle, even if it's propped up there. If that make like maybe adjusting the angle in some way, I don't know. The yeah. tripod is there a way to do that? Well, I mean, part of the problem is you know, I want 
I want to participate in the stream, so I want to look this way. But yeah. my desk is over there. Yeah, yeah. I got you. It makes it it makes it tricky. Well, I yeah. mean, I'm not saying that, like, look, I just have it like this. I don't think that's the most visually representation that most, but, you know, it's fun. It works. It works what you do. Yeah, yeah. I Just for me, that works. I do have an easel, and I've used it occasionally. I just seem to find that, like, this, this setup, but I would like to get a setup where you have the tribe. I mean, I have a tripod that would go down like that, but not exactly. So I don't know. Yeah. I'm just wondering what it looks like on screen here. But it I looks drew. fun. I like it. It looks like a lot of people. Yeah. There's one dog. Can you see the dog? Oh, I do see the dog. He's in the foreground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I used to draw a lot of people. I don't know why. I don't like crowds. But I like to draw crowds of people sometimes. Yeah, maybe it's just interesting like to draw like a crowd and just to think about what are they doing? I mean, I don't know. There's an interesting story. Like, well, I don't know how interesting it is. It's kind of weird. We went to Disneyland. I didn't know this happened, but my sister told me about it. She said, yeah, we went to go watch the Main Street Electrical Parade. And she was really short. And she's trying to see around this woman and this man and he said oh can you not see and she's like yeah so he moved his wife aside and she was like what that's weird that was weird that was that weird. Is, yeah that was really strange and I, I didn't see this happening but another time i remember like i just was taking some pictures of the um of the parade at disneyland i remember this and apparently when i developed the pictures later there was this lady like making these poses in them I think she thought I was photographing her. It was really interesting. Wow. She's like, and I was like, okay, no, I wasn't photographing you. I was actually, I just always wanted, this was before we had digital cameras. I just wanted to document. And I actually, from a young age, took some interesting pictures, I think, of the parades and stuff. So that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I'd ever go again because now, like, um, I think it's a hundred and maybe sixty dollars to go for one day. That's ridiculous. I, I can see maybe a family doing it, but no, I just don't see the point right now. I guess. Yeah. Plus, it's even more crowded, and it used to be so crowded then. And I felt like then I was like, oh, it's so crowded, and now I hear it's worse. Yeah, I'm I'm not really into amusement parks myself. No, I. The only reason we did Disneyland back in the day is because I think it was kind of like an experience. And also back then, it was much more affordable. Like if you lived in the Southern California area, um, even when I was in my like early 20s, I think. I mean, this might sound expensive, but it was around $40. That's not too bad for an amusement park because now like it's gone way up. Like a lot up. And sometimes you get a discount where you could like see both parks in one day. But they took all that away. So I'm like, I'm not going to bother anymore, you know? Yeah. But a lot of people still do. Like, it's still really big. Like, I guess when they reopened, like, there was a line around the park. And apparently those people didn't get in because you were supposed to RSVP or something with your, like, because it was Orange County. I think you had to show, like, I'm not sure about your COVID vaccination or something. And a lot of these people didn't RSVP, so they didn't get in anyway. So I was like, wow. That's interesting. <laughs> so I'm just not, I don't get it, but you know, I'm glad people like busy places. I just don't like it that much right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Mostly stay home. That's good. I think that's the best way to go at this point. So anything else doodly wise that we should discuss? Well, let me see. Can you show uh, the flower, it's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. I feel like the lighting, is it too bright? Is it washing it out, though? No, it, it, it looks, the petals are beautiful. I, you're very good at this. Yeah, I actually do have some, like, innate talent, I guess. I kind of yeah. like doing it. I mean, I used to draw a lot of flowers when I was young, like a lot of flowers. I used to draw, like, a rose all the time and tulips. 
I was so obsessed with tulips. At one time I painted tulips. I think I showed you a lot of my artwork. So, you know, I, yeah. And I do love flowers. I really do. But I'm just kind of using this pretend flower as my reference. Oh. But I love this flower. It's so pretty. I got yeah. this at Burlington. But I made one myself too recently. So I got these guys at Burlington. But the other day I went to the Dollar Tree and I thought, oh, I want to make like you could just make your own bouquet. So I did the same thing, except they raised all their prices to like $1.25. But I found these guys and I thought these were kind of pretty, too. Oh, yeah. Now, are these uh, are they supposed to be peonies, do you think? Yeah, it says one of them is tea rose and the other ones are peonies. Oh, yeah, very these nice. And I think, well, I mean, for a dollar twenty-five, it's not bad. Plus, you get this matching vase. So Burlington, yeah, this was six dollars, but I I went into like some high-end department stores, and they were charging like forty dollars for a flower display, like fake flowers. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you could either make it, or you can get it at the I don't know the. I like Burlington a lot because they have a little bit of everything. Like, you know, this really cool paint set. I got it on sale there for like $7. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. They have the like clothes. They have cosmetics. They have food. And my sister's like, you buy food there? And I'm like, well, sometimes they have like Italian pasta on sale. And it's good quality or chocolate. Like sometimes, I don't know. They just have a lot of random things because basically it's like a wholesale outlet is what it is, is you know, a lot of stores buy things in bulk and what they can't sell ends up being sent there and it's slightly discounted. So I don't know. I kind of like looking there. I haven't been in a while, but it's fun. Oh. Yeah, I must go to the Walmart Superstore for almost everything. No, but that's what you have in your town, right? Yeah, that's what I have. And I like Walmart. I mean, we just don't have a super center. Like I was telling you, we have a smaller one, but I love Walmart. Actually, I've always been a Walmart person. I thought it was kind of dumb when they were always saying people should boycott Walmart. I said, well, that's really dumb because I like Walmart and I like what they carry. And it seemed like their quality kept going up and up. And recently I used to like Target, but I don't even like them as much anymore because their quality has continued to go down. I've noticed. And their prices keep going up. And they don't even have as many things as Walmart has. And Walmart's clothes are actually cuter than Target's. I know this is not R-related. But my sister and I were like, what is going on with Target's clothes? They look really strange right now. They look like, not even like Little House on the Prairie. They look like they're just really frump. It's weird. Like, And then they have all these models. And I never hear anybody, like I never see anybody in Target anymore, like trying on their clothes. Whereas Walmart has a variety of cute clothes. So I think Walmart's pretty good in general, my opinion. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. I mean, they even have affordable things too. Like they have like, because I think they think about family. So, but all, I think it's just hilarious because people maligned Walmart for years, but they're actually much more family friendly than like Target. So I don't know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's just my thought on shopping. I'm not a I'm not a snob. I'm gonna shop where it's like affordable. Like I guess somebody I knew like wore these really cute capri pants and somebody told her, Oh my god, you bought those at Walmart. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, no point being a clothes snob, I think. Yeah, and she was really cute. I'm like, well, I don't know what that lady's problem is. You look nice, so whatever. <laughs> But anyway, that's just my little rant on shopping. And you can even find art supplies at Walmart. See, you found those nice paints there. Yeah, yeah. So let me let me just share the things that I did today with you. Um, so this was the watercolor that I did on your live stream, on your mm -hmm. channel. I like it. It's really cool. Yeah. And... This was my first scribble, my first doodle, basically a uh, girl with a lot of flowers. <laughs> but it's very floral and it feels very spring-like, I think. Yeah. And then I decided to do this crowd. And they're watching the fireworks, maybe. Maybe. Could be. So. Well, I, I say you had a productive art day. 
Yeah, and I love your flower. Yeah, I think the, yeah, the flower turned out really well. I think I'm not like super happy. The person was kind of funny, but I kind of like the parrot. It's hard to see, I think. Yeah. It got washed out, but the parrots, it kind of was fun. The yeah. parrot. Just yeah. Don't, for the <laughs> okay. <laughs> But yeah, so that was fun. Okay, well, I th I think we'll probably call it a night, and we can do this again uh, next Sunday. Yes, and we'll be doing a painting on your channel once again, correct? Yes, yes. All right. Well, good night, Julia. Have a good night. Good night. Bye.